great evening again to just drink into what the Lord is doing. Right where you're seated, would you please bow your heads and take a moment to give God thanks for the generosity of all that we have received at Harvest Summit 2024 and that which is still coming. That which is still coming. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. Lord, thank you for inheritance distribution. Thank you for tokens and tributes of covenant. Thank you for resources. Thank you for abundant provision. Thank you for revelatory receptacles. Thank you for access point into covenant. Thank you for guided instructions. Thank you for ideas, insights, and inspiration. Bless the Lord for warnings, for reproof, for correction, for commendation, for confirmations, for approvals. Bless the Lord for encouragement in righteousness. Give him praise. Are you blessing the Lord? Are you honoring him for what he has given to us? I want you to take a moment to cry out for the Lord's help that there will be conversion. In the name of Jesus, let there be consecrated conversion. That revelation will become reality. That prophecy will become possibilities. In the name of Jesus, that the prophetic will become pragmatic. That the spiritual will become strategic. In the name of Jesus, Father, let there be consecrated conversions of revelation knowledge. Let these weighty waves of wisdom open up new portals of power in our lives. Father, show us the way that we ought to go. Give us specific guidance and Lord, empower us to make quality decisions in destiny. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let this revelatory dimensions flow into our relationships, flow into our resources, flow into our homes, into our health, our academics, flow into our businesses, into ministry. In the name of Jesus, we declare that we are strengthened, divinely enabled in righteousness, that we go forward, we advance significantly, and that we ride prosperously in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we will profit with your counsel, and you would reap a glorious harvest of the divine seed in our spirits. In Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. I declare over you, in the name of Jesus, that you are helped. You have the advantage of covenant. The things that are produced on the account of God's mercy and grace that forges a person forward in the direction of faith. The propelling effect of the prophetic, the covenant capacity that enables you to rise and to be strong in destiny is at work in your life. You are helped by God. It is noised abroad that God has marvelously helped you. Everywhere you turn, you will be a living proof of what God does with you, dead vessels. Through your life, the scripture will make sense because you will give full proof to the calling of Christ in you. For the exact season of life you are in, I invite you into customized grace. The grace of Christ, the divine enablement to produce great results, the advantage of covenant to go beyond the odds, to sprout like a plant from a dry ground, to break beyond the barricades and to leap over walls. The grace that upturns protocols and opens up unprecedented doors of grace, let it be multiplied in your life. You will see the hand of God. You'll be a proof that God is good. You are divinely supported, divinely supplied for. You are supernaturally lifted. In the name of Jesus Christ, the angels of God that have been assigned to the program of God for your life are active and are at work. In the name of Jesus, opportunities are negotiated for you. Protocols are broken for you. Quality relationships are opening for you. Counsel is coming to you. An advantage is opening up for you. The word of God is breaking open in your spirit. And it is becoming master plans and roadmaps that give you clear guidance into the specific steps you must take. Your journey will not be lonely. In the name of Jesus, you are separated from the choices that don't honor the will of God in your life. You are coming into attunement, alignment, and assignment. You are the very center of God's holy perfection. Enter into divine possibilities. 
of God by advantage of the covenant. Let the redemptive benefits of Jesus Christ by the substitutionary sacrifice of the cross matter and make meaning in your life offering you an access point into prophetic outcomes that could have never been created by your mere ability the kindness of god the tender mercies of yahweh and his gentleness will make you great over and above your natural lineage enter into the advantage of belonging to a calling in christ you are covered and defended you will not die but live to declare the goodness of God in the land of the living. Your joy will increase. You are provided for. You are defended, delivered, protected, promoted. God is with you. God is for you. God is in you. God is ahead of you. God surrounds you. The power of divine life will deliver you from the limitations of humanity. No matter how dark it gets in your generation, your light will shine stronger. Your light will shine brighter. Your light will shine greater. If there have been mistakes, misdeeds, and missteps that you engaged in, in moments of not reckoning who you are, in moments of not identifying with your identity, Today I declare that you renounce and you denounce the agreements you previously made in carnality. I declare that you renounce and you denounce the agreements that you made in complacence. I declare that you denounce and you renounce the agreements that you made in laziness. I declare that you are strong. Every tiredness of body, of soul and of spirit, every kind of weariness that has made it difficult for you to walk in the fullness of the purposes of God. Receive strength that comes from above. Be divinely enabled to carry out the highest instructions required for your lifting. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you understand the next most significant steps that God is calling you to take. You are in step with God. You are in line with God. You are in order with God. You are in time with God. Come into precision, holy accuracy, divine depths, height in righteousness, mature and be mighty. Enter dimensions of revelation that you've never had before. Let the scripture be open to you. Understand the will of God. Burn with holy fire. Let your altar come ablaze. Be ignited by the power of the spirit. A new breed without greed. Carry God to your generation. Walk in power. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Your health will not fail you. Every part of your soul structure, your body formation, every part of your genetic makeup, even your heredity begins to respond to the power of the blood. You are covered. You are kept, your habitations are safe, your dwellings are secure. You walk in angelic activations, awakened answers, supernatural supplies, miraculous manifestations, prophetic possibilities, oiled opportunities. I declare you are a son of oil. You are immersed in the life-giving power of the spirit. You will do well. You didn't hear me, I said you will do well. Rejoice, 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 rejoice. Like one who got a title did. Rejoice. Like one who got a title did. Rejoice. I am a rabbello. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Please be seated. God bless you. There's a great gift that the Lord has brought to us. It's the gift of sonship. It's had father-son conversations with us. He's invited us to be awakened to maturity. He's course-corrected us when we have chosen the path of least resistance. 
He's challenged us to remember who we are and whose we are. He's invited us to identify with our identity. This is not the first time that you have had an encounter in destiny. This is not the first time that you have been invited into covenant conversations and consecrations. This is not the first time that God has shown you a dimension of who you are that only exists when you look into the perfect law of liberty. This is not the first time you have been reminded of possibilities that exceed your natural ability. But this is going to be a different day. A day comes in the life of a man when you must ask, haven't been endowed with the heart of a lion, why do I live like a mice? A day comes in the life of a believer when you must declare, others may, but I will not. A day comes when you reckon and you cry out to God, Father, if there's anything you are doing in my generation, don't do it without me. That day is the day of the Lord. For you, the day of the Lord has come. Harvest Summit has become the day of the Lord for you. And in the name of Jesus, as you go to war and you go to work with the resources that has been judiciously distributed in this summit, God will reap a great reward on your life. You will be fruitful and your profiting will appear to men. In the name of Jesus Christ, from the moment you start to unpack the considerations of diligence as a believer, you are making a commitment to go far. One of the reasons that we always stay at the level of complacence, the level of comfort, or the level of carnality is when we do not accord a recognition of the requirements that it will cost us to walk in destiny. It will cost you something. The only thing is you have to choose your heart. It's either you go deep in God, in the lifestyles of consecration, holiness, purity, a passion for the word, you know, an investment in the lifestyle of, of prayer, a kind of heart, but that has great benefits, or ultimately, people get derailed to the other side of complacence. In the beginning, it looks like freedom, but ultimately, it becomes a kind of tyranny. And the invitation we have received from the Lord is to transition soils so that the good seed can produce a good harvest in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you find yourself asking the question, DDK, what manner of commitments must I make coming out of Harvest 2024, Harvest Summit 2024, so that it can matter in my life that I had an encounter with the Lord? What kind of changes must I make in my thinking and in the way that I organize my life structure so that I can emerge on the other side of maturity, face by face and season after season, a son in whom God is well placed. The first conversation naturally and supernaturally takes us into the requirement of a lifestyle of prayer. Beloved, more than ever before, there is a pressing urgency in the spirit concerning the body of Christ, especially in Nigeria today, that we must shift our focus from the fanciful and we must step into new, uh, new dimensions of rigor in the pursuit of the things of the spirit. God is calling us to prayer. There was a man by the name Jabez. Scripture described him as a man who was more honorable than his brothers. By destiny, he had a great calling and he was set apart for a holy and a mighty mission on the earth. But on the account of the circumstances of his birth, environmental situations and past mistakes, events that had occurred in his growing up years, he had obtained a new identity that was different from who he truly was in Christ. And is this not the, who he truly was by destiny? And is this it's not the case for many believers. We start off on the wrong footing. We didn't get born again from our mother's womb. We acquired a taste for the things of the flesh. We had an appetite for things that don't honor the true identity and the original essence of our becoming in Christ. But a season comes in your life where you, like Jabez, begin to cry out that you have to enlarge my territory. You have to change my story. He said, bless me indeed. He said, place your hands on me and bless Bless me so that I would no longer cause harm. A lifestyle of prayer. Jesus Christ, God the Son, came for a mission on the earth. He lived his entire years on earth just to die so that he can be given over in substitutionary sacrifice that the just requirement of God the Father will be fulfilled on the behalf of humanity. And when he came to the most crucial moment, 
of his life's purpose. He said, I wish that this cup will pass me over. It truly means that when it concerns the matter of our divine calling, when it concerns the matter of our becoming, it's going to be tough, it's going to be uncomfortable. There might be difficult decisions that you have to make so that the, the, the investment of God in your life can mature. It will not always be rosy. But it is only a man or a woman of prayer that is able to press through the difficulty that is associated with a life of purpose to come out on the other side. But we do have help by the Spirit. Hallelujah. I said we do have help by the Spirit. The scripture says that the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be uttered with mortal words according to the will of God. We have been invited into a different season where you have to make room in your life for prayer. I have seen mighty things break out of my life, my ministry, my vision, my parenting, my marriage on the account of prayer. And we're going to find ourselves in all manners of prayer in the coming days. And what you have to reckon is that you will ultimately find yourself often moving from duty into discipline before delight. Many of us back off before we get into delight because it just feels too difficult to press on. But the spirit of the living God is going to carry you. As you reorganize your life and you begin to prioritize and schedule moments of intimacy, the spirit of the Lord will infiltrate all parts of your life, awaken your sensitivity, give you a greater hunger, but you must take this important step of calendarizing encounters. And it's not because you are trying to box God into a corner, it's because you are trying to box yourself into a life of regimen. Those without discipline cannot come under governance. Those without governance are too chaotic to house the move of God. A lifestyle of prayer. A second thing that I would love to highlight to you, beloved brothers and sisters, is around honoring the private dealings of the Spirit. We have become too talkative. We have become too careless. Everything now is a show. And you never know how this thing creeps into your personal life. But the moment you find yourself seeking validation and using what God is doing with you or showing to you as an opportunity for egoism, to say that you are spiritually stratified and that you are at a higher realm than others. The moment you, you can't find your satisfaction and full identity in what Jesus Christ has done for you and paid for, you're going to find yourself caught up in the web of this mind control mechanism of Satan that is riding the wave of media. There are things we should have never seen about the lives of others that we have seen on social media. There are intimate experiences. And, the, the, and you, you know, the lines get so blurred that people will say to you, we, we're telling the story of our intimacy so that it can inspire others. We are not the PR officers of the Spirit of God. We have a calling to represent him. But we can't represent him if we have not been with him. We don't become like the one we have not been with. And when we are with him in private, our lives will have proof in public. Private dealings, private encounters, private devotion, private revelation. Scripture spoke about Mary as treasuring these things in her heart and pondering on them. Some instructions will come to you. And you have to become a student in the school of the spirit. When it comes to uh, maturing as a spiritually intelligent saint, there are some dimensions of your life that the moment you fix your spiritual, what we call spiritual sagacity, spiritual intelligentsia, spiritual wisdom will grow. Number one, spiritual archiving. You have to make a practice of documenting the dealings, the nudges, the stirrings, the prophecies, the scriptures, the dreams, the songs. You have to make a practice of it. 
spiritual architecture. You begin to ask, based on who God says I am, how, how should I organize my life? How should I organize my business? How should I organize my time? How should I organize my, my relationships? You start to architecture how your engagement will look. You can't afford to be haphazard. You can't afford to be anyhow. In fact, the covenant forbids anyhowness. So you, the moment you see that there is no regimen around your life, scripture speaking about Jesus Christ, that he will wake up long before it is dawn and he will go to a secluded place. That was a system of prayer. That was a strategy of intimacy. Do you understand this? So spiritual architecture, you begin to organize your life in a certain format. Spiritual action. You start to walk in obedience. You start to take specific steps. Something that I do every retreat at the end of the year, I will take the things that the Lord had said to me at the start of the year. By the way, every month, I would often add to it and go back to it. But at the end of the year, I will go back to the journal where I had what the Lord said to me as the year, you know, the year before coming into the new year, weeks on weeks, months on months. And I will start to copy out the things that I have completed, the things that I have done the things, the improvements, the adjustments, whatever requirements he laid in my heart. And year on year, what I have found is the gap gets closed and is shorter and shorter between what I was told to do and how I came to the end of the year. So there will be dealings, but we can't live our lives in public. And what you will find is as the fascination to be known, to be heard grows, people are going to run after pseudo success pseudo success is an appearance of success greater than the evidence of success where you, people may not be really having proof in their lives of fruitfulness of maturity of a genuine walk with the lord but they look like it and they are satisfied to look like it and the moment the pursuit of pseudo success overtakes a man then they begin to operate in what is called the spirit of man man as god unto himself amen and amen but that is not us that is not us where people set apart for the purpose of god where people set apart for the glory of god where people yielding our lives as living sacrifice i want to read a scripture to you and this is where I'm going to be pulling to a close my charge to you tonight. And I pray that you carry a burden beyond tonight as you go forward to seek out the Lord with a different level of intensity. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5, he says, For this very reason, applying your diligence... To the divine promises make every effort in exercising your faith to develop moral excellence and in moral excellence knowledge and in your knowledge self-control and in your self-control steadfastness and in your steadfastness godliness and in your godliness brotherly affection and in your brotherly affection develop christian love that is, learn to unselfishly seek the best for others and to do things for their benefits. For as these qualities are yours and are increasing, increasing in you as you grow towards spiritual maturity, they will keep you from being useless and unproductive in regard to the true knowledge and the greater understanding of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is blind, short-sighted, and having become oblivious to the fact that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, believers, be all the more diligent to make certain about, about his calling and choosing you. Be sure that your behavior reflects and confirms your relationship with God. 
For by doing these things, you will never stumble in your spiritual growth, and you will live a life that leads others away from sin. For in this way, entry into the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be abundantly provided to you. This is a full menu. Is that correct? And I think the remarkable thing that I find about a scripture like this and most of the new, uh, the, the new scriptures in the New Testament or, or actively the epistles is that you really find an invitation to take action. I believe with all my heart that one of the greatest types of warfare against believers in our own generation, which is of essence a warfare against the harvest of God in our lives, is carnality. There's too much carnality in our time. And it is because church in its religious format has praised certain metrics of perceived spirituality, which is simply church culture and not scripture culture. So we've adored those who have leadership qualities and can rally people, have an advanced technology of tongues, can break down the word. But the closer you look to the scriptures, you will find that God is really about our fruit. It's really about the evidence of our lives. It's really about the becoming of Christ. And if I were to give you the highest definition of the harvest that God is seeking to reap on your life, it is for you to become as Christ on the earth. This is what the journey is about. If we're not there, our burden and our desire is to be to continue on that path. And it says you are going to require diligence. Some of you have experienced the rigor of a doctoral program. My perception is that until you apply the scriptures with almost doctoral rigor to an area of persistent carnality, you may not see change very quickly. There's a reason the scripture said, seeing that we are surrounded with such a great cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily besets us. Amen. I believe that based on your personality, your subconscious conditioning, what you've actively witnessed from significant adults, the appetite you've acquired, the prevailing culture you grew up in, I believe, and I have scriptural proof, that there are certain kinds of temptations that hold a greater appeal to you than they do to me. And there are some that hold a greater appeal or pull than they do to you. And so on your journey to sonship, you quickly start to find that there are areas requiring greater diligence and devotion. You can no longer apply a cosmetic experience to your spirituality. Carnality is standing in the way of the Lord's harvest. We're talking anyhow. We are keeping two faces in two cases. We're acting like we love, but there's offense in our hearts. We don't really understand the kingdom and its hierarchy and its formations. We don't have a great degree of honor. We choose what discipline means to us. We eat anyhow, sleep anyhow, do whatever we want to with our lives, but we feel okay to be HODs of departments and to use our gifts because on the outward, People look at our lives as though we were making progress. And so this is our invitation to apply rigor to the things of the spirit, to pay closer attention, to take the word and make it your behavior, to catch yourself when you are not behaving like who you are, and to say, we don't speak that way in our kingdom. We don't act on impulse or on emotion. I know what I could have done if Christ didn't save me, but now he saved me. Amen and amen. My final scripture to you is found in 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. The Lord gave me this scripture when I was 14 years old and it's changed my life. He said, study and do your best 
to present yourself to God approved. My God, there's something there. There's something there. This means that not everybody has God's approval. This means that we may all be children that he loves, but we are not all sons that he trusts. This means that you may apologize about it, but it doesn't mean God approves of it. He said, study to show, do your best to present yourself to God approved. A workman tested by trial who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. And what I want to leave with you in this scripture is that there is a manner of trying that is coming to the body. And it is not primarily of tribulations that is external to you. It's not really about hardships and difficulties. It's not really about things that cause you to cry and run, run to God or feel like you're running helter-skelter looking for an answer. For many of us, our trying and our tests is within the construct of character formation. There are private dealings that it might be only you who knows about. And the Lord continues to call you out on these little foxes. A season will come when a believer does not heed that the Lord ceases to strive with that man. He may feel that the matter is at rest, but he might be losing a placement of significance in the purposes of God. I want you to take a moment to pray again tonight that the Lord will highlight arenas of growth, arenas of transformation, that you will be corrected where he, or he seeks to correct you and that grace will be multiplied. Grace will be multiplied. Take a moment to pray tonight.